about my live ukulele setup, which I get asked about at concerts and gigs and shows occasionally. Um, I use a Dodin multi oot Koa HG tenor ukulele, a bit of a mouthful, with Deodario titanium coated strings, with a Cornell custom valve acoustic amplifier, and a Boss AD2 acoustic preamp. The reason that I use the Godin ukulele is because it's pretty much designed and built for live use. Um, it doesn't have a sound hole which helps avoid some feedback issues that you may get with other ele electroacoustic instruments when in the live situation. Um, it does have a Koa top, hence the name, um, and also semi hollow body which gives you a little bit of acoustic resonance and sort of tone. Um, the inbuilt acoustic preamp is the standard sort of Godin uh, set up with volume, bass, middle, treble. I have mine set almost flat but with a little bit of mid EQ cut. The volume I always have um, just under full volume so it gives me that, that one louder that all musicians obviously need. Um, the neck is quite thick, thicker than most than you'll find on other ukuleles and the tension, tension is quite hard um, uh, with mechanical machine heads and the neck is bolted on, which is a little bit different to other ukuleles, um, and a 9 volt battery compartment for the active uh, preamp. The saddles are individual saddles, independent from each other, which gives you a bit more um, resonance uh, with the strings when being amplified. The tension isn't a bad thing. You actually, I, I do prefer a little bit of a harder tension when it comes to playing live because you tend to have a little bit more rigidity, um, less tuning issues and so on and so forth. So if you're playing sort of more aggressive, more strummy type uh, techniques, um, you don't really get any tuning issues, for example. <laughs> ukulele pretty much to what I use in the studio. I use a, a Cordoba acoustic ukulele in the studio that's got a very thin neck with low tension um, but quite fragile um, and this is another reason why the Godin works quite well is that you can you know take it to different places um, in different environments hot and cold and the tuning pretty much stays constant whereas the more sort of delicate acoustic instruments tend to sort of move around the wood is sort of tends to move which gives you tuning and intonation issues and, and problems and so on. The amplifier is a valve amplifier uh, made by Dennis Cornell. Um, I worked with him quite closely on this and it's a, a, a class A valve amplifier which basically means um, that it's got a valve preamp and a valve output stage as well um, as with all class A amplifiers. Dennis um, is uh, an exceptional um, builder of amplifiers um, and other various people have, have used his equipment in the past including Bill Rahe Marvin and Eric Clapton and so on and so forth um, but the when looking at other amplifiers and working with Dennis this is probably the most musical sounding amplifier and what I mean by that is that it best represents the acoustics of an instrument than over others um, I keep it very basic again with this bass middle treble EQ and a volume control it has two inputs, low and high impedance for different instruments. It has an effects loop built into the back which I've connected the preamp to. Um, and in this case I asked for a separate cabinet to head. Um, but obviously being a custom builder you can pretty much ask for whatever you want. Um, the sound that you get from these as I say is, is the best sort of musical representation. Um, with the acoustic preamp turned off you can actually get a sense of what this actually sounds like on its own. Again, just harmonically. Very rich, very responsive, as you would expect from an acoustic instrument, but also from a high quality amplifier like this. Um, there's no reverb built into it, um, and I you know, specifically wanted it you know, with the effects loop, so I can add effects as and when if I need to but keep the amplifier basic as best as possible. 
A bit excessive, maybe, but actually, you know, worth it in the end. The acoustic preamp, um, this has three controls on it. Uh, ambience, notch, and acoustic resonance. It has input, output, and line out, just to go through those. The input and output are your standard sort of input and outputs. I have this connected to the effects loop, which means I come out of the send to the input, output of the pedal back into the return of the amplifier, therefore integrating this within the preamp and postamp of the, of the head. Um, you can use it, instrument straight in, output straight into the amplifier if you wish, if you haven't got an effects loop or that's the way you prefer it, that's entirely up to you. Um, but it also has the line output, as I say, which is quite useful because that means you have a, a, a balanced um, quarter inch jack output, which means that on one end you can have a, a quarter inch jack, it looks like a stereo jack, um, but then on the other end you might have a, you would have an XLR, or could have an XLR, which goes direct into the mixing desk, giving you a stronger signal for the sound engineer to work with. And you can use it from going straight from the instrument into this straight line out into the PA. That gives you, um, you know, quite a good little sound and, you, and a little bit of control over your sound. Um, and I have used it in that case for smaller gigs and shows and so on and so forth, where you don't have time or, you know, the resources to set up an amplifier like this. Um, the controls, just to go through those briefly with you, the ambience is reverb. Um, it's very subtle reverb, but it's very high quality and, and very good. Sounds similar to the sort of reverb you might get from a, a, an acoustic instrument in a, in a small hall or something, and a little bit of control over that. Um, the notch filter is a notch filter. It basically um, allows you to select a certain frequency um, and cancel it out and it's uh, and you can turn it off completely or you can have it on as selected or as you require. Um, I've got it set at the moment to around about sort of just off past 12 o'clock because I want to cut a little bit of mid-frequency out but some people use it if um, you're in a live environment and you get feedback you can just dial the notch filter around to find out what frequency is feeding back and therefore uh, remove that frequency from the sound uh, and cancelling out the feedback overall. The acoustic resonance is basically Boss's attempt to recreate the acoustic resonance of uh, an acoustic instrument and it works quite well. It gives you a bit more characteristic and it also gives you a little bit more um, resonance as it says on the tin. Um, but it also enhances some of the frequencies that may be lost by using a jack plug and plugging it into various different things. Um, just going through the, you know, the actual sound of that, um, this is with the pedal on, um, just to give you the, the sound. sweeter, more rounded sound than you do without the notch filter put in. And it also avoids 
the um, possible possibilities of, re uh, of uh, feedback. The other function with the pedal, which is quite useful, um, is that if you hold the pedal down for a couple of seconds, the light flashes, and what that basically means is that it cuts your sound. Um, that is useful for unplugging, plugging your instrument in, um, avoids that thud noise that you get when you do that. Your sound engineer will love you for that, as will your amplifier. Uh, but also it's quite useful for when you're uh, tuning your instrument, so the audience don't hear you uh, trying to recreate that song tuning, as it were. Um, but as I said before, this, this may seem a little bit excessive when it comes to um, a setup for an ukulele, but I prefer to have that control um, and backline so I can monitor myself. But and also, you know, once you've actually got the sound set up, the volume and, and everything else can just be increased or decreased, and and a lot simpler to, to work with when you're in a live environment. Um, I tend to use an SM57 when I'm micing it up in a live environment, but sound engineers will use you know what they what they wish generally. Um, but it does make it the, their life a little bit easier because they don't have to worry about getting the sound right on the desk um, because you've got a little bit more control over it here. Um, I think that's about it actually to be honest with you. Um, I hope it answers some questions and also gives people a little bit of uh, inspiration to sort of go out and try something a little bit different rather than just acoustic ukulele. As I say, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and I do tend to you know, spend most of my time playing acoustic ukulele in the studio and also just for pleasure. Um, but from a live point of view, I do prefer to have a little bit more control over my sound. Hope that helps. Um, if you want any more information about this equipment, you will find some links on my website, www.andysankeymusic.com. But uh, I will hopefully speak to people soon.